Hello everyone, Melina Putnam here with another episode of Chicks in Charge, our deep dive. Every episode you get to meet a new boss chick. This series is focusing on Oklahoma City boss chicks and today I have Sarah Stewart with Solid Serenity Legal. She's a lawyer. She's the only lawyer in our flock of now 46 women. So welcome to the Hot Pink Couch. Well, thank you. First of all, who is Sarah Stewart? Obviously, we know you're an attorney, but kind of give us an idea of your interests and passions and kind of what makes up your personal brand. Okay, so I, uh, I really like to help people fill the holes in traditional estate planning. Mm -hmm. So I focus a lot on families because I have my own family. And it was when I had my two boys that I realized there was this need out there for young families to have those holes filled. Um, but in my personal time, I really love to do chujitsu. That is fascinating. This like, this stuff? Oh, right. no. No, it's no. more like on the ground. On the ground. Plane. Okay. Yeah. So, but wow. I love it. It's amazing. How it's did you come about that? How did you even learn about it? <laughs> well, I became a single mom a few years ago. And so my first thought was I love to travel mm -hmm. and I want to take my boys traveling with me. Okay. And so I want to make sure that I can protect them. And so awesome. I had a friend who did it and he recommended the place I go now because it's very woman centric in some ways. Okay. Um, there's an instructor there, a coach, who's a woman, so it, it's very helpful. <laughs> so how often do you do that? At least twice a week. Wow. And so, you guys, beware. She will take you <laughs> down, right? So it's for safety. Do you recommend that for every woman to go? Do they have safety classes and that sort of thing? Well, so they do. Um, there's usually around this time in the fall, my coach will start a, a women centered program that's just women on Saturdays, self-defense. I think it runs about eight to 10 weeks. Okay. Um, but there's also, personally, I think going longer term is better because it's all about muscle memory and knowing how to react in a situation. So it takes a little while. To oh, really that is so that. smart. I love that. Okay, so let's go back then to when you said you had your boys, you have two small boys. Yes. And so you're a single working mom, so that's obviously pretty stressful. So how do you balance owning your own law firm and all the time and commitment that takes with also being a mom? Definitely tribe and support, right? So I'm lucky Love enough. our tribe. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm lucky enough to have family here. Okay. And so they help me sometimes. Um, also, of course, daycare. <laughs> yeah. It's very important. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I just really have to reach out and ask for help and ask for support. And I'm lucky enough to have people who provide that. Yeah, that is so important. And of course, it's important for uh, dads out there too that have families, but you, that question gets asked so much of moms because even though things are a little bit more even, even when there's two people in the household, a lot of the brunt of the labor and all that goes to mom. So I'm always interested to hear how we navigate that because even though we have some freedom and flexibility with being our own business owners, um, there's still a lot of work that goes into yes. balancing it all and us not feeling like we're going crazy in the process. So um, how do you find some me time besides the jujitsu? What calms you down? What kind of, do you have a meditation process or something that, what's your me time look like? I do. So I take about 15 minutes every morning to do my affirmations. I do some meditation and I also do visualizations. Um, that helps tremendously. I also, I luckily, because of my tribe, I have, you know, on the weekends, usually I can take a little bit of time to go do some things for myself because I don't know how I would do it otherwise. It is so important because we end up just feeling drained. And Absolutely. if we don't replenish the well and recharge the battery, then there's nothing left for work or family. So I'm really glad to hear you share that with, with everyone. I hope that all the viewers out there will take a little bit of time every day to just kind of recenter and breathe and, and take some time to um, focus on really what's important and our, ourselves right. and, and notice how we're feeling and what we need to do to um, keep going. So that's so important. Um, so tell us, you know, there aren't, what I've heard out there is that there aren't enough lawyers now, but fewer people are going to law school and the, than women and it is, why is that? Have you noticed that? How many women were in law school when you were in? You said you've been a lawyer for about 10 years now. And then, so take us through why you decided to be a lawyer and what you're kind of seeing in the marketplace now 
and then um, again how you decided to, to have that niche in estate planning. Okay, so um, I started as an attorney. I was actually in school for journalism and broadcasting. Okay. I wanted to be on the news. Um, but about that time was when we kind of saw the switch in media. We stopped with Tom Brokaw and Walter Cronkite and Barbara Walters, and it became more of the, I would say, company-led media that's mm -hmm. more biased. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wasn't interested in that. Okay. So I was taking a media law class, and I found it fascinating. And so I thought, well, why not go to law school? I don't know why that thought. Sarah, yeah, I took media law, and that thought never crossed my mind. So I love that that was a trigger for you. Um, and I also was in journalism and broadcasting, and I did end up getting my degree in that, but I was not on the news either. So it's, it's fascinating to hear, and especially for our young viewers, to know that our journey can take us through many different paths. And right. it's, it's really important to look at that and honor that. And so you decided then, media law, oh, this is fascinating, so why not go to law school? Right, and it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. uh, so I went to law school. Of course, in law school, you don't really focus on a niche. You just kind of okay. learn basically how to think as an attorney, mm -hmm. which is pretty trying, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but when I got out, I started in family law, decided I hated it. I didn't like dealing with the custody and, and the constant emotional turmoil that people go through. This family law is primarily on divorces and, and custody. custody arrangements. Yeah. Okay. And so I went on to um, head a nonprofit. It had already been established, but they brought me on as executive director. And so we did a lot of the things I do now okay. uh, for the senior population. But I got kind of worn out by the fundraising and the grant writing you know, all the hats you wear as a nonprofit. And I realized that we really didn't have the ability to really connect with our, our audience, our, our you know, clients, because there were just so many of them. I mean, we had a thousand cases a year. Wow. And there were three of us in the office. So it didn't work out for what I was really wanting to do with my life, which is have this connected, you know, type of relationship with the people that I, that I serve. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And so, kind of what is your, what's your day-to-day -day then as an estate planning attorney? Oh, that varies a it lot. Does. Okay, <laughs> so, but you do go to court some? I do go to court. Okay. Yeah, so I can do, um, so probates are a big part of it, which is if someone passes away, transferring assets of that person. But there's also some trust litigation, so okay. maybe someone's not doing what they're supposed to do right, mm -hmm. so I'll go to court on those things. Uh, I also do guardianships, which is protecting vulnerable loved ones. So you may have to go to court because, say, grandma isn't able to take care of herself anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I also do a lot of document work. Shocker, right? Right. <laughs> Lots of paperwork. That's right. And, you know, um, part of my day also is just running the business, right? Mm -hmm. We have to get out there and we have to get to know people and, um, you know, take care of our employees and all those wonderful things as well. Okay, so, so since you are... A boss check then what would you say has been the biggest challenge owning your own business honestly it's getting that first employee even though it's the biggest payoff in the long run it's so scary right because to find the right person part or? of it but more of it I think is taking that leap being okay. able to say now I have to pay all these taxes <laughs> yeah to pay this salary right taking it to the next level exactly absolutely that fear and just that trepidation of oh I haven't been here before what's right. that look like yeah so what what do you think is the the best advice you've ever received it could be personal or business that you'd like to share with us today so the best business advice I ever got was you'll remember the client you didn't take more than you will the one you did so that's because Basically, the idea is don't take on everybody just because yeah. they can pay you. Um, Be selective. Absolutely. And that has been the best choice in my career um, because, you know, some people just don't value what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And so you have to find the people that fit and that value you. Yeah. Well, and a difficult client is definitely worse than no client at oh, all. Oh, absolutely. Because it ends up costing us, even though they may be paying us, it, it's more costly because of our emotions and the time that we may have to spend in it, the stress and all that. So I am totally with you there, yeah. sister. So <laughs> everyone, please take heed on that. That's great advice. And then kind of tell us, what are you reading right now? Who are you inspired by? 
Okay, so uh, right now I'm reading The Beautiful No, okay. which was actually one of our, our book club picks. Yes. How um, far are you in the book? I'm only about halfway through so okay. far, but okay. I like it. I like the concept of being able to balance your life mm -hmm. and being able to say no when it's appropriate. I think women have a hard time doing that. Right. We're always taught that we need to put other people's needs above our own. And so actually I would say over the last two years, that's really been a focus of mine, not just with this book, but a lot of my personal growth is making sure that I'm aware of what I need and I'm taking care of those needs. Yeah. even though I have two young children to take care of and a business to run and all yeah. these things to do. Yeah, but I'm so glad that you brought up that book. So we had book club last night. So we pick a book and then we have two months to read it um, and then meet. And then even if we haven't read it yet or finished it, we discuss the main points of the book. So the book is by Sherry Salata, who is the executive producer of Oprah. Fabulous woman, isn't right. she? I mean, but she's a great example of someone who was really married to her work, and so she had pushed aside her health, um, she gained a lot of weight, and so she talks about that um, health and wellness journey in there, and how she kind of yo-yoed through, almost like what Oprah did throughout those years, right. you know, as well. And then um, her, they call it the pillar life now, and so it touches on the 360, like every area of your life, are you taking care of your, you know, spirituality and your intimate relationship? She even towards the end of the book talks about, um, think about your sensuality. And as women, we don't think about that as much. You right. know, we, again, especially if we're working moms too, if the focus is completely on the kids, sometimes we, all those other things go to the back burner. And the beautiful no, um, and one thing, I think there were eight of us there last night, and a lot of us shared and had very similar beautiful nose so that's something that you thought you wanted in your life but ended up not getting right. but it ended up being a beautiful no because of what came after so one door you know shuts and the window opens that um, metaphor that we've heard so many times and so do you know what your beautiful no is at this point I know you're halfway through the book but I would say for me it's actually my divorce mm -hmm. it really was um, I mean I got married when I was young and so I didn't really, I realize now, know myself. I thought I did, right? At 22, yeah. you think you know everything. Yes. Same. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. So going through that process, even though it was scary and it was hard and it was tumultuous, has really turned me into living the best life that I could and to finding that balance and to knowing that I need to you know, grow in all these areas and to pay attention to my personal health and my children's health and my business health and it's taught me how to balance, I think. And really, it's just made me so much happier. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so good to hear. And I know for all of you out there that are struggling in a relationship, whether you're married or not, I will say that probably half of us you know, last night, we're talking about that, sort of the, the death of a relationship being a beautiful no, because even though it was super painful at the time, again, what came after and the realizations of what we were doing in that relationship that um, seeing that it was toxic or unhealthy and all that um, was it, just such a revelation. And you don't see it when you're in it, but then when you're on the other side of it, you can look back and go, okay, so that's what was happening. And I am so much happier now. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm sure that's going to, to benefit a lot of the viewers out there. So, okay, so parting words then, Sarah. Um, what is making Sarah Stewart smile today? At this interview, being here with you. Melinda. Thank you. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> <laughs> we have a wonderful tribe at Chicks in Charge, and so just um, I really do enjoy the time that we have together. Whenever we're at luncheons or we're at events, or I can't wait for trick or treat ball. That's oh my be gosh, it's going to be fabulous! Can't wait. So for you uh, watching in Oklahoma City, trick or treat ball is a ghouls' night out. So time for our lady friends. Like it's so important. Right. Again, friendship is something that. Uh, gets on the back burner too often. And so that's one of our missions in Chicks in Charge is to bring uh, women out and, and grow your network. Um, loneliness is a huge problem in our culture today. And I know I don't want to just meet people online. Like I right. like this, you know, real 
<laughs> real FaceTime. I can touch real you. FaceTime. Yeah, you're a real person. <laughs> so, uh, so definitely check that out. And you can always learn more about Chicks in Charge at chicksinchargeok.com. It's the same on Instagram. It's the same on Facebook. And then we have a directory on our website so that you can follow each of us. All the chicks are listed there. So if you do need uh, an estate planner, if you need, um, gosh, Carrie's over there. She's our next interview, um, our digital diva. They're just, all 46 are well represented and diverse in all these areas. So definitely check that out. And Sarah, thank you so much for being in the tribe well, and our flock and great interview and best of luck with everything. Well, thank you. Okay. We'll see you guys next time.